is a two-part training program for the SNC Load Buster. In part one, we'll show you several applications for a load buster, including overhead transformers, sectionalizing switches, capacitor banks, and non-load brake switches in underground switching cubicles. In part two, we'll show you how to perform a detailed inspection to ensure the load buster remains in safe operating condition. The load buster is a very useful tool to de-energize equipment that does not have built-in low brake capability. The load buster is suitable for switching on single and three-phase overhead and underground distribution circuits when used with disconnect switches and cutouts that have load buster hooks. The load buster is designed and rated to interrupt 600 amps nominal or 900 amps maximum load current. We'll show you when and how to use the load buster properly and safely. It's your responsibility for using safe procedures at all times when operating a load buster. If you'll follow the written safety rules in Section 0 and use good common sense, you won't go wrong. According to Section 0, unless the switch is operated from a tested aerial device, the operator of single blade disconnect switches must wear a hard hat, rubber gloves, and approved rubber footwear for added protection. You must also wear safety glasses with side shields for eye protection. One of the written safety rules in Section 0 requires that all fused cutouts and all primary fuse holders shall be operated with a hot stick. Be sure you don't choke up too close on the hot stick. Maintain the required working distance at all times. When operating fused cutouts, you should be in a position to remain clear of a possible flash or fuse tube discharge should the fuse blow. This is true on both the overhead and underground systems. You don't have to use a load buster to de-energize transformers smaller than 50 kVA and sectionalizing switches with less than 50 kVA of connected load. You must use a load buster to de-energize transformers 50 kVA or larger and sectionalizing switches with 50 kVA or more of connected load. If the load is unknown, always use a load buster as a safety precaution. You should visually inspect your load buster before using it. Look for obvious signs of damage and always check the spring tension to ensure it is properly reset. The load buster must be mounted only on a switch stick or a shotgun stick with a permanently attached universal fitting. It should never be attached to an adapter fitting which is then used in the clamp end of a shotgun stick. You should be in a position on the opposite side of the hot stick from the load buster. This gives you an unobstructed view of the load buster hook and the pulling eye on the fuse tube. After each operation, you must reset the load buster before using it again. First, we'll show you the sequence for de-energizing an overhead transformer. Begin by reaching across the cutout and hooking the load buster ring over the hook at the top of the cutout. Then swing the load buster toward the ring on the fuse tube. Insert the load buster pulling ring hook through the ring on the fuse tube. The pulling ring latch will deflect and upon complete entry into the ring on the fuse tube it will spring back, locking the load buster to the fuse tube. To de-energize the transformer, pull downward on the hot stick with a firm and steady pull until the load buster trips or snaps at full extension. The load is interrupted internally when the snapping sound occurs. The reset latch will keep the load buster open. Avoid hesitation or jerking motion when you pull. Generally there is no indication of circuit interruption other than the snapping sound the load buster makes. You may hear buzzing at the top of the switch when the tool is installed or removed. There are two ways to detach the load buster after opening the switch. The first method works well where the fuse tube drops open by gravity. Of course, this is done only after the load buster is fully extended and has tripped to de-energize the load. Remove the load buster by simply rolling it off the fuse tube and the pull ring at the same time. Twist the hot stick slightly and it should roll off the fuse tube fairly easily. The second way is to raise the hot stick slightly and disengage the load buster hook at the top of the switch. Do this carefully or you could cause a flashover if the clearance becomes too close to another phase or grounded hardware nearby. You must reset the load buster after each operation. 
Lift the reset latch briefly with your fingers or thumb and telescope the barrel completely so that the load buster will reset for the next operation. Check the load buster to ensure it is properly reset by extending the barrel outward two or three inches. Throughout this travel, you should feel increasing spring resistance or the tool is not reset properly. Capacitors carry full circuit current. You should open the middle switch nearest to the pole, then the other two in any order. You should allow time for the load buster to cool down after de-energizing each capacitor or use more than one load buster, alternating between them to ensure the load buster is cool each time. The load buster can also be used to open non-load brake switches in switching cubicles. However, be sure to use the end cover when using the load buster in a switching cubicle. Before opening them, you should ensure that all the non-load brake switches in the switching cubicle are closed and latched completely. This could prevent a non-load brake switch from falling open under load by itself and causing a flash. Reach across the front of the fuse with the load buster and hook it over the attachment hook on top of the power fuse unit. Swing the load buster toward the fuse holder and pass the load buster pulling ring hook through the pull ring of the fuse holder. The pulling ring latch on the load buster will deflect slightly and then spring back, locking the load buster to the pull ring on the fuse tube. Pull the hot stick with a firm and steady pull until it's extended to its maximum length and it snaps open de-energizing the switch. You should avoid any hesitation and jerking motion as with all load buster operations. The reset latch will keep the load buster open once the circuit load is interrupted. To detach the load buster, turn the hot stick slightly. This deflects the pulling ring latch and releases the pull ring of the fuse holder, allowing the fuse tube to fall away from the load buster. You can also remove the load buster from the load brake hook at the top of the switch in the same way you did with an overhead fuse tube. To reset the load buster for the next operation, lift the reset latch with your fingers or thumb. Telescope the barrel completely so that the tool is properly reset. Then release the reset latch. As before, check for proper resetting by extending the barrel outward two or three inches. Throughout this travel, an increasing spring resistance should be felt, or the tool is not properly reset. To keep a load buster tool in good condition, it should be stored in a storage bag or case designed for the tool. You should always be alert to conditions that may indicate something may be wrong with the load buster tool. Check for these things in particular. Changes in the sound of discharge within the tool. A loss of spring tension after resetting the tool properly. Carbon deposits within the silencer area. To check the silencer, remove the extended insulating hood and unscrew the silencer. Check the inside of the silencer for carbon deposits. If carbon can be easily removed, it should be removed. When any of these conditions are found, the load buster should not be used until it is given a thorough inspection after being disassembled. In part one of this video, we've shown you safe procedures for using a load buster. The tool will make your job safer and easier but only if you do your part. Remember, safety takes precedence over all other requirements. Make each job a no accident job. In part one of this video, we showed you how to use the load buster in the field. In part two, We'll show you how to inspect the load buster to ensure it's in good condition. The load buster is rugged and will withstand normal usage for long periods. However, you should periodically check certain components which are subject to gradual erosion and wear during normal operation. Since the load buster does not give audible or visual signs that show the components are eroded or worn, you must rely on the number and severity of operations as the basis for maintenance. Normal life expectancy is about 500 to 1,000 operations involving average switching duties. If the load buster is frequently used to interrupt heavy load currents near its rated capacity, it should be inspected more frequently. To disassemble the load buster for inspection, remove the plastic cover from the load buster housing and unscrew the end cap. 
Pull outward on the end cap far enough to get to the lock nut with a 7 16 wrench. Then remove the two screws that secure the end cap. Next, remove the four screws that fasten the trigger assembly to the inner tube assembly and remove the trigger assembly. Completely withdraw the moving contact assembly out of the inner tube assembly. Slide the guide bearing off the moving contact assembly and set it off to one side. Next, withdraw the inner tube assembly out of the load buster housing. Unscrew and remove the silencer from the inner tube assembly and set it to one side. Remove the retaining ring at the end of the anchor assembly. You can use a screwdriver and hammer if you're careful not to damage the anchor assembly while you do it. Remove the anchor assembly by pulling it gently until it slides off the inner tube assembly. Using a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, remove the small set screw that secures the stationary contact assembly within the inner tube assembly. Withdraw the stationary contact assembly out of the inner tube assembly with your finger. Examine the stationary contact assembly carefully for damage from arcing or excessive pitting. It can be reused if it is undamaged or has only minor damage such as a slight pitting. Next, remove the plastic cover from the load buster housing. Then, unscrew the bearing retainer from the load buster housing. Next, remove the nylon bearing. And after checking it for damage, set it off to one side. Also, remove the inner tube seal, carefully noting how the seal is oriented as you remove it. Next, carefully unscrew the metal contact tube from the moving contact assembly. You might have to use a small tool in the hole of the moving contact if it's too tight to unscrew by hand. There are two factors that help you determine if you need to replace parts of the load buster. First, inspect the condition of the white material at the trailing end of the moving contact assembly. It should be free from glazing and erosion. Check for signs of other problems at the trailing end including reduced diameter or mechanical damage. If you have a micrometer, the white trailing end should measure no less than 65 hundredths of an inch over its entire length. Second, check the condition of the flexible copper wire inside the spring on the moving contact assembly. It must not be frayed or broken. Load current passes through this flexible wire before the circuit is interrupted. If the wire is broken or damaged, like this one, the load buster must not be used until it is repaired. Carbon deposits on the probe may be removed with water and an abrasive household cleaner, such as Comet, applied to a paper towel. If this is necessary, be sure to remove all traces of the cleanser with clean water on a paper towel after cleaning. If you find it necessary to remove carbon deposits from the probe, you should also remove them from the material that the probe passes through inside the inner tube housing. You should use a small round brush and abrasive household cleanser to remove the deposits. Be sure you remove all traces of the cleanser with clear water and completely dry the parts afterward. If you find parts that are damaged or in poor condition, you should replace any part necessary to restore the tool to good condition. It is recommended that you replace the inner tube assembly, the stationary contact assembly, the moving contact assembly, the guide bearing and silencer as a group. Replacement parts are available from the manufacturer of the tool. If all the parts are in good condition, then clean and reassemble the load buster. To assemble the load buster, reinstall the stationary contact assembly within the inner tube assembly. Make sure the small hole in the stationary contact is aligned with the one in the metal part of the inner tube assembly. Replace and tighten the Allen head set screw ensuring that it goes through the hole in the stationary contact assembly. Place the bearing retainer, threaded end up, over the end of the inner tube assembly. Next. Install the inner tube seal, flange in down, over the inner tube assembly being careful that you don't damage it. Place the nylon bearing onto the inner tube assembly after the inner tube seal. Next, insert the inner tube assembly into the load buster housing while you hold the reset latch up with the fingers of your other hand. Turn the inner tube slightly until the knots on the inner tube assembly is aligned with the reset latch on the load buster housing.
Pull the inner tube outward a few inches and install the anchor assembly onto the inner tube assembly. Being careful to align the tab inside the anchor assembly with the notch on the inner tube assembly. Install the retaining ring into the slot on the inner tube assembly above the anchor assembly. Tap the ring into position carefully. Screw the silencer onto the inner tube above the retaining ring. Screw the metal contact tube onto the moving contact with the flexible spring. Position the guide bearing on the opposite end of the metal contact tube. Insert the moving contact assembly into the inner tube assembly. Next, install the trigger assembly by holding the trigger with a finger until it's positioned over the metal tube of the moving contact assembly. Insert the trigger assembly into the load buster housing, being careful to align the notch on the trigger with the slot inside the load buster housing. While you hold the trigger assembly in place with your fingers, install and tighten the four screws with the screwdriver. It may be necessary to stand the load buster trigger end up to get the screws started. After installing the trigger assembly, fasten the end cap to the moving contact assembly using your fingers to get the large screw started. Then, use a screwdriver and the 7 16 wrench to tighten the end cap to the moving contact assembly. Lubricate the end cap threads with silicone lubricant or Vaseline and screw the end cap onto the load buster housing. This completes the maintenance procedure and the load buster is ready for a trial run to ensure it's operating properly. Check the load buster by pulling outward on the anchor assembly until the load buster trips. Release the reset latch and collapse the inner tube assembly completely into the load buster housing. Pull outward a couple of inches on the anchor assembly to verify the spring tension that indicates the load buster is properly reset and ready for another cycle of duty in the field. The load buster is an excellent switching tool that provides you with a safe way to de-energize load. If you treat it with the care it deserves and the minimum amount of preventive maintenance, it will help you work safely in your job.